money. A lot of money. A shit ton of money. A slap yo mama can't believe they offered that much amount of money. That's what the WWE's new deal with Netflix to broadcast WWE Raw represents. That's it. Sure, there are other things, right? There are other elements. But first and foremost is the money. Again, I want to emphasize a shit ton of money for the broadcast rights to Monday Night Raw for the next decade, if it'll even be Monday Night Raw long-term, who knows? The WWE got Netflix to sign on the dotted line to the tune of a total of five billion dollars. That is five comma zero 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 comma zero 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 comma zero 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 shit ton holy hell five hundred million dollars a year for the secondary ratings draw in the wwe portfolio that is obscene like every time a company like wwe goes to negotiate their tv deal they're looking for an increase in the rights that they rights fee that they could charge, right? And man, they nailed this one. <laughs> like, this, it's it's interesting just to look at this, but you have to take a moment and say one thing WWE is able to do, especially under apparently Nick Khan's leadership, is they are able to put these competing media conglomerates uh, feet to the fire and get themselves an incredibly advantageous deal. A half billion dollars a year for a decade. And what's really been interesting about this is how the mindset of WWE has changed in the past decade. You know, because this is a company in the early years of the internet, they were trying to figure out their way and the internet is one of those places that uh, is really hard to control, which under Vince McMahon's leadership is critically important. He always had to have control and always do it his way. So he always felt like the WWE is kind of slow to catch up to the internet and in particular social media. But then when the WWE Network came out in 2014, you're saying, oh wow, this is a fundamental change of approach to the WWE pay-per-view premium live event business model and a major change just to the way the company does business. What they're basing their revenue streams on, how they're delivering their content to their millions of fans and customers across the country and all across the world. And somewhere in the past few years, as I guarantee you, initially this could not be the vision, was not the vision, no way in hell. But somewhere along the way over the past few years, before the deal was signed with Peacock, the the mindset of WWE changed to where they understood the real value in streaming is not standing up your own shit and funding that yourself. The real value is getting somebody else to pay you for the right to stream your shit on their stuff. And we see this as they made the switch from WWE Network, at least here domestically, right, to Peacock. And now as they make this major shift, this I'd say argue seismic shift in their brand and their technological media footprint by going from the USA Network from Monday Night Raw to Netflix. Now, it it begs all types of questions here and lots of curiosity. And I got to say this, like, it feels awkward, the thought that 
Raw, which has been a major player in cable television for over three decades, is going to be available on a streaming service. However, if you're going to be on a streaming service, Netflix would be the one, wouldn't it? When you think about just the millions upon millions upon millions of subscribers that they have, far exceeding the national and international footprint of somebody like a Peacock. And to be able to get paid $500 million a year to get your product in front of millions upon millions upon millions of more potential customers, even if most of them don't nibble, even if only a fraction of that customer base for Netflix nibbles, it still represents a significant gain and a significant boon for WWE. So there's that. Now, when you think about, oh, you're taking that off of cable television, it's not like they're losing their cable television presence or their television presence, right? And I would argue that what the WWE has done is actually really smart. They've expanded their scope and they've expanded their distribution and they've kinda, they're kind of gonna have this nice one, two, three punch. Whereas you're gonna have Raw on Netflix, so you're on a massive streaming platform with the potential to reach even more viewers that you would have on any cable television network alive. You're still gonna have SmackDown on TV, but instead of broadcast TV like Fox, it's gonna be on USA Network. But again, they got a shit ton of money for that deal. So you've still got your cable television footprint. And then they've been able to diversify, and this is the cool thing in my opinion, looking at this from a business standpoint, is they've been able to diversify and unwrap and get rid of the single threading kind of in their um, revenue stream for TV rights deals. You've got NXT on CW, which is broadcast over the air television. Certainly with not nearly the same reach overall or impact of a USA network, certainly not with the reach or impact of a Netflix, but still you're talking about Major distribution in streaming, major distribution in terms of cable television, major distribution, relatively speaking, in terms of broadcast television. It is really hard to knock this. Now, I will admit, I am not as familiar with some of the details about, you know, whether Netflix has been, been going to be, eventually become the long-term home of their premium live events, you know, how long that's going to stay on Peacock. But either way, like, especially if you say for the here and now, you talk about Peacock, you talk about Netflix, even if there was some overlap, where now you have two different places that you're able to stream your product. Like, this is a tremendous outcome for WWE. And I can't imagine anybody sitting there and saying, this is a bad deal or a dumb deal, because at the end of the day, what the WWE was able to provide was a significant amount of revenue certainty for their shareholders. And that's what it's about at the end of the day, like it or not, when you talk about corporate corporations and publicly traded companies, the number one goal of the program is maximize shareholder value. Well, by being able to guarantee revenue of 500 million a year for the next decade, they've done that. I would almost argue they went too far out and that maybe WWE should have only went five to six years with this deal at that 500 million per because what could the landscape look another five or six years from now? Could you have been able to, in five years, six years, get yourself 700 million, 750 million? But I understand that long-term certainty allows you to build a long-term productive relationship with Netflix. You can become a key part of what that streaming service does. They will build things around your product. like. You know, even if you hate WWE, and there are plenty of reasons to do so, even if you want to be a raging AEW fan, fine, whatever, that's your business. There is absolutely nothing to talk trash about with this news. I mean, the WWE has di diversified their television footprint. They've realized significant rights fees and upgrades and increases for their television products. 
Like they're doing phenomenal business right now. And oh, by the way, what great publicity, because money is news and big money is big news. And boy, did you just have some big money news drop this week right before the Royal Rumble. And that's not even getting into Dwayne Johnson being on the board of TKO. Like big week for WWE. We got the Royal Rumble coming up Saturday night. But at the end of the day, all this deal means is, most importantly, because this is the name of the game, it's a business. A shit ton of money.